One of the big changes for the Ram 1500 for 2025 is that we now have a hands-free driving assistant. This is very similar to Blue Cruise and Cadillac Super Cruise. Let's get this out on the highway and see exactly how the Ram system stacks up. This is the exact same software package that we're gonna get in the Grand Cherokee for 2024. So if you want this software package, you can already order it on certain Grand Cherokee models. First thing we're gonna do is get on the freeway. We have to be on a limited access freeway in order for this to function. We then turn on the active driving assistant here, set the uh, speed. Over here on the instrument cluster, you'll notice that little car icon just turned green. That means we are now in the hands on the wheel driver assistant feature. Now you can see it just turned to hands off. So let's just uh, give this a whirl and see exactly how this goes. The requirements for hands-free driving in the Ram are pretty similar to the Ford and the Chevy. You have to be looking forward because it has a driver monitoring system right here just above the steering wheel. I have to say that location is an awful lot more discreet than the system that we find in the F-150 where there are sensors on the side of the driver rather than simply one looking at you. It's actually very similar to what we find in the General Motors Super Cruise system. I also think that these green lights on either side of the instrument cluster are a little bit uh, better as far as telling the driver what mode the system is in as well. In a lot of the Ford products, the LCD turns blue and then it turns black when the system disables, but here I think that the green LED is just a little bit better. On the other hand, rather unusually, there's not a lot of information going on on the heads-up display. Right now, it's just showing our speed limit, our current speed, and our next turn-by-turn -turn direction. It's not telling me the status of the hands-off-the-wheel steering assistance system. I do think that is a little bit unusual. Uh, as far as paying attention to the road, I have a co-driver with me, so I'm just going to go ahead and glance away while Travis is paying attention. We'll see how long it actually lets you look at the camera right here. So go ahead and, Travis, be prepared. Let's see what happens, see what it does if it thinks I'm inattentive. This is a really long time. It just started uh, yellow here, so it's saying, please look forward. Oh, my seat just vibrated. That's kind of fun. Um, is it gonna do it more? I'm still not looking forward. Does it have another mode? Please look forward again. There we go. Oh, it got, oh, it got very mad. It started turning red. So I actually think that's a little bit better done as well than some of the systems that we find in Ford Blue Cruise. I do think that Cadillac Super Cruise and that lighted section of the steering wheel is better. Also, I just noticed that it told me I needed to put my hands back on the steering wheel, but very similar to Blue Cruise, there's kind of a disconnect there. Because if I'm staring at the road just in front there, I'm not looking down there for the car to tell me, hey, put your hands back on the steering wheel. I'm surprised it didn't beep, it just showed me on the screen. The system also doesn't do a good job telling you, hey, I'm in hands-free mode. It just turns green, it doesn't beep at you. So again, if you're paying attention to the road ahead, it's not really gonna be there to tell you, hey, you can take your hands off, or hey, you need to put your hands back on. I am surprised that this is something that Ram has not thought about as well, but I'm actually probably a little bit more surprised that we're now on several versions of Blue Cruise and Ford still hasn't fixed that particular problem. Uh, let's go ahead and see what happens if we want to change lanes here. So. Uh, Ram 1500 is next to me. That's the current generation, old one, even though it does look quite a bit like this one. So let's go ahead and engage this. It does have a lane change assist mode. It knows that it can't change lanes quite yet. Oh. It's not gonna do it for us there because uh, traffic here. Let's go ahead and try that a little bit later. In fact, actually, I'll just get back to you. Uh, let's just drive for a while and see how it goes. Oh yeah, there we go. There's an automated lane change right there. Like most of these systems, it is very, very cautious about the automated lane change. So uh, it has to have a pretty wide opening, lots and lots of space, and it doesn't seem to adjust the position of the vehicle for that automated lane change like we find in Cadillac's Super Cruise system. Super Cruise is a bit more aggressive about trying to nudge its way in there. It'll speed up a little bit, it'll slow down a little bit to try and find a spot that the vehicle will fit in. But so far, I have to say that the ability for this vehicle to stay in the center of its lane, the lane centering ability, it's not ping-ponging back and forth. 
I would say this comes across as a little bit more fully baked than the current generation of Blue Cruise, and I do think that the lane change function worked pretty well. It's actually pretty similar to Cadillac Super Cruise. I just wish there was a little bit more consistency as far as some of the requirements for these systems and the way they interact with the driver. I really would love to see everybody adopt that lighted steering wheel setup that Cadillac and GM have in their vehicles. That's a really elegant way of making sure that this notification is really in the way of the driver's eye line so you can really tell what mode the system is in. And if they're not going to do that, I would just love some, some audio messages, a little kind of a beep or a, a trill or something like that to say, hey, I'm in the right mode uh, or I have exited the mode and you need to take over. Yes, this is a hands off the wheel, eyes on the road driving system, much like Blue Cruise and Super Cruise. So you're still engaged in the driving process. That's the logic for why they don't do that sort of thing. But because your eyes are up here, eyes on the road, not eyes on the instrument cluster, in fact, Many of these vehicles, if you're staring down here too much, they'll actually start complaining at you. That's kind of the origin of my problem. If my eyes are up there, I would like some other way of being notified that, hey, it's time to take over. We've got 12 more miles to go on I-35, so let's just see if it requires any interventions between now and when we get to Austin. Ooh, we got close to that line there. Got a little close to the line over there. Didn't need any intervention, but I do think that it just swerved a little bit to the one side. That was a relatively sharp turn on this road. These lines are not exactly smooth on this section of I-35. Uh, like Super Cruise and Blue Cruise, you can put your hands on the steering wheel and correct it if you feel like you need to. So if you are a little bit worried in an area where you think there might be a tight corner coming up, you can just grab the steering wheel. It won't exit the drive mode. You can just assist the assistance system, I guess you could say. Still in hands-free mode, but I'm a little bit uh, just leery of how it's going to go here. So I have my hands on the wheel. So far, it feels like it's about right. The lane lines there are not very clear. There's some construction going on. Unlike some of the systems, it did not turn off. It decided to just carry on in the hands-free mode. Oh, now it's gone to no hands-free, unsupported roads. I think that's because of the construction. Uh, this is pretty common with hands-free driving tech, so I can't really claim that as a demerit on this system because Blue Cruise and Super Cruise would also have canceled under this same situation. And up here, we're going to be in an area where you're not supposed to change lanes because of all the construction going on. We'll see how it uh, takes over once this area is done. Again, no notifications though. If I wasn't looking at the whole green thing, how, would I, how am I supposed to know that you're not in hands-free driving mode? Come right. on, That's come on, Ram, come on. Put something up on the... On the yeah, heads-up heads up display. Up. Like, you, the you can ding, this thing dings every other time. The there we go, hands-free. Oh, and it's still green, it just went, ah, hands-free like, oh, apparently I'm supposed to... But yeah, seriously, Ram, why, why can't you beep? Like, it dings if I take my seatbelt off. Oh, hands back on the steering wheel. Don't know why for this one. I think it may be that continuing work zone. There's a work zone sign over there. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the sign recognition thing says work zone. Oh, but now if all of a sudden we're hands-free. Even though that kind of looks like a work sign to me. Travis is going to take a photo. Proof that I'm not driving and taking photos, even though I'm hands-free, so I could, right? I was gonna it was starting to slow down but I wasn't I wasn't quite sure maybe I needed to have more faith but 
you know, there we go, everybody. So we're half a mile from the exit. I'm going to go ahead and change lanes here because I need to change lanes more aggressively than the car will. I have to say, bottom line, the system did a really good job. I would say in some areas, it's a little bit better than Blue Cruise, but the experience is substantially Blue Cruise-like. I would say that Super Cruise comes across as a much more refined system. It seems to operate on a greater variety of road surfaces because here in Texas, it will do a number of ranch to market and farm to market roads, whereas this system appears to be limited to the interstates and state highways here. So a little bit more flexibility on something like Super Cruise. And I think Super Cruise does do a better job of notifying the driver what it expects of the driver. And that's one of the most critical components for me because Systems like this are not automated driving. This is not an autonomous driving system. This is a driver assistance system where you are still engaged. Eyes and brain involved, hands off the wheel, but there is still a lot of driver involvement required in this kind of system. And if the car is not doing a good job of notifying the driver what it needs from you as far as control and input, then I would say it's a bit of a problem. And I would really love to see just better explanations about the modes, especially in the heads up display or on the steering wheel or an audible symbol, something like that, an audible uh, notification rather. So let me know what you think about all that. And are you interested in this kind of system? Do you have this on the Grand Cherokee? Keep in mind that this is generation one of this system from Ram and from Jeep. And this is fully over the air updatable. So obviously there are gonna be refinements and improvements coming in the future. and definitely refinements and improvements on future vehicles coming in the future as well. So I would say as far as a first generation system, this is actually about as good as the first generation Super Cruise was, and I think better than the first generation Blue Cruise. So they've already started off in a pretty decent place. Let me know what you think about all that. Hit that subscribe button and check out the full review of this Ram 1500 with the new three liter twin turbo engine under the hood. See all of you later.